What's what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to 3D Printing Sunday, STL Sunday. The uh, whole point of the show is that we take a project and we go through the process of 3D modeling it, typically in minds of having it 3D printable at the end. Any of the files that we create, we upload to Thingiverse and you guys can 3D print them yourself. Again, most of the point of what we're doing here is the actual 3D modeling process. So hopefully everything is good. Couple, few minutes late, but it's, uh, we're, we're ready to go. So tonight, a couple of things. I'm hoping to do a actual project like we normally do. The I Tonight I thought I would do a horizontal bandsaw as a possibility, but I also would like to do something kind of fun and do the, uh, do like uh, some speed rounds, like see, you guys can come up with an item and I'll see if I can get it done in five minutes or 10 minutes, depending on the, the complexity of whatever it is that we're actually doing. So we'll see if everyone checks in and we'll get going. Uh, we'll be using Fusion 360. That's the program that we use every week. And that's because you can get it for free in most places. You can get a personal use license. It's not super easy, but it's easy enough. So thanks everybody saying hello. Uh, that a new desk? Nice. Yeah, it's not a, well, it's, it is newer. I've had it for maybe, uh, I don't know, a few weeks now, a couple weeks, a few weeks. But let's see. Uh, by the way, the semi looks good. Missouri's checking it. Ryan Davis, hello. Yeah, the semi has been my recent project. I spent basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then up until about 20 minutes ago working on it. And it's pretty much done now, though. So I uh, got a handful of projects for that to get done. Well, before we jump into here is the 114th to me a semi. This is the King Hauler. I put the um, I put some six inch stretch frame rails and grand hauler rear fenders. Looking good. Painted it myself. Got it painted last night. And actually uh I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna do a couple of custom things here and there, but or you know, more custom, but lots of uh orange paint and then some pearl clear coat on it. But the MFU is in, it's wired, came out pretty good. I haven't attached the visor yet. It's just sitting on there, but other than that, everything else is done. But let's jump into tonight's project. So we'll switch over to Fusion. Now, tonight I was going to do a couple of things differently. As you can see, I have changed the lower inset window to actually have a, uh, a photo of the item that we're going to work on. That was a suggestion by somebody that people who join and don't know exactly what we're working on. It's just the middle of me drawing something random. Who knows if I'm zoomed in or not. The inset window should help people have an idea of what, what we're working on. So it might be a little bit easier. And even for people who maybe know, but don't necessarily know the exact, you know, direction that I'm, I'm looking at. And since we always had that little hole down there in the, uh, in the screen, it seemed like a good use for it. So this is our, let me adjust this window slightly. So we see all of it. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> bandsaw, this will require a lot of bearings. That's a pretty good point, <laughs> but hopefully we'll see, uh, you know, the actual chance of me using a functional blade in there probably not going to happen. You're going to have to retrofit your own. Um, so yeah, this is our project to ton for tonight. We'll try and make this somewhat simple and, you know, not as overly complicated as I tend to have made these projects in the past. So let's just get, let's get cranking away. Now let's, let's start with the base actually, just because that seems to be, it'll give us an, a starting point. We'll have an idea. Now, one thing is, is that I do have that photo up there, but I don't actually have any dimensions for this, um, which is something that, you know, maybe would have been a, I've got Granger up on the monitor above me. So I'm going to pull that, there we go. 
uh, overall width, 50 inches, overall depth, 18 inches. There we go. So I drew a rectangle, I'm hit D for dimension. 50 inches would be five inches or pretty much 125 millimeters. Closest makes no difference. So 18 inches, one point, what's 1.8 inches in millimeters? 45.7, so we'll just go 45 millimeters. And then we're just gonna keep this base nice and simple. So I'm gonna hit Q for our press pull. And I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Now, a lot of times, like this horizontal bandsaw that we're looking at here, the ones that have that solid base, like you see in the corner, that's usually ones that are that have like a coolant tank. So they'll actually have a coolant tank up there and they'll be able to feed coolant onto the actual blade to cool it. So there's different options, but that at least is the the, the way that we're going going for tonight. And on top of the base, we're going to have a coolant tray. And we're just going to go ahead and add that now. Now, I already went with overall dimensions for the size of the base. So this is probably, you know, this is again, something that now becomes slightly out of scale, but I don't think that that's a big deal. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to make a rectangle, but I'm going to go to center point again. That way I don't have to do as many dimensions. So we're just going to do, let's do six millimeters off the side. And oops, cancel. Six millimeters there. Wow. <laughs> Everyone discussing the lot lizard discussion that was way too in depth on Friday. Let's go, uh, we'll do two millimeters up is fine. Now let's, well, we're going to add a, we're going to hit P for project to grab the outside. And then I'm going to do another center point rectangle. Basing everything off the origin makes everything nice and easy. And we're gonna do this at two millimeters as well. Do that, let's pull that up. Ooh, too, too much. Let's just go up two more. Um, Actually, I'm going to go back and we're going to adjust that previous sketch and I'm going to make these dimensions four millimeters. And I'm going to do that because I want to add some chamfering. Chamfer. Yeah. Actually, I don't know why I did that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep the chamfer on the inside. That. And then we can just do two millimeter, or we can do, uh, instead of equal distance, we can do two distance. And we can do this one at like, five millimeters, that one at two, we'll keep it like that. Those things often have kind of a more of a tray on the inside, so. I wanna add a little bit of that to the outside. Two distances. Up will go two again, and then the other direction All right, looking good. So that gives us that part of it anyway. I've got another, I've got a, the same image that I have on the inset below, 
myself here. Uh, I've got a, a larger version of up in the monitor in front of me so I can actually kind of look at some of the features and go from there. Let's just, let's add some, add a little bit of detail just to keep ourselves moving in a fun way. I'm going to 100 millimeters there and then add a midpoint constraint to get it centered. Oops, we're gonna add a, uh, go up five. Well, actually, I actually have a different image I just noticed I'm looking at a different jet bandsaw on my image than I am on this one here. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Uh, is this guy really printing that thing in the bottom right window? We're, we're going to design it so that you can print it yourself if you like, or not, or don't, either way. But the point is, is that the items that we're drawing are made to be 3D printed. So the files that we create will end up being free to anybody who wants them, of course. So now let's do a very simple wheel design because these horizontal bandsaws generally have a wheel of some sort. Do a six millimeter. Doing a construction line, so you hit L for line, X to make it toggle between construction and standard. And actually we're gonna change that to three point these wheels are never that big so we're going to adjust the position of this construction line there I know we've made wheels on however many occasions but They're, they're so simple that we always end up making more. Right. So for, uh, he, he ever make a mini lathe or drill press. I've made both of those. They're both available in my, on my Thingiverse page, which is linked in the description below. There's both a mini lathe and a drill press. Go print them for free. What do you guys think about just making the wheels part of it? Or should we make them separate so you can make them multicolor? Yeah, should we just make them separate? It'll make it easier to print the base more clean anyway. All right, we'll make it a new body. That's fine. I've made my decision. Let's see, we're gonna hit P for project to grab that. 2.6. Line construction. I'm just doing this to give myself a mirror line. We're gonna do the mirror command. We're gonna grab that about that line. Put it on both sides. It didn't do it. Why did it not do that? There we go. Now we're going to make these cuts. This whole thing is we're making these cuts just so that we can give ourselves an ability to thread the actual wheels on. 
one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the first body, which is the base. Give ourselves a look at the wheel. I'm going to sketch on the back. And we're just going to make that 1.5. Negative 0.25, actually we'll go negative 0.4. Two layers of a 3D print. That's just so it doesn't ride completely flat on the back. Um, do that now. Let's give ourselves just a two millimeter ridge there. inset just a hair and then we'll just put the smallest amount of chamfer on that edge we'll call that good i'm going to hit a to pull up the appearance menu again like normal we're just going to open one of these glossy paint why not and then let's do pearl enamel and that I'm going to duplicate that color, edit the color, and then give ourselves a dark version. And I'm going to apply that to the wheel. So that way we can tell we have different bodies going on. That's the main benefit I like to having. Now I'm going to, I hit the move or copy thing at the top there. Then I'm going to hit create a copy. And I'm just going to drag that over. This is just for visual anyway. We don't really. Okay. And then I'm going to. I guess I could have could have mirrored that, but left to right. But then it doesn't like to mirror a mirrored copy. So sometimes sometimes doing it this way works best anyway. Four wheels. Boom. There we go. Um, so this is obviously a very boring start, but the bottom side of a bandsaw base, not exactly the most interesting thing anyway. So now let's start getting into something that's actually going to be worth looking at. We're going to create a sketch here and let's do I'm going to do center point sketches, rectangles. We need two rectangle kind of feet for the base. So we're going to put a constraint on that. I'm going to do some equal length constraints on these two bases just because and simplify things for drafting. Nothing more than being a little lazy. 30, and then we'll put a, uh, uh, 80 millimeter. Sure. I like that. All right, hit Q to press pull. We're going to drag that up a little bit. 10 millimeters. These are going to be new bodies. Now, technically these are two separate bodies right now. This will, those will get combined, uh, eventually into the, I don't know, whatever, whatever you're going to call it. Like <laughs> you guys can't see where I'm pointing because it's just an image on the screen there. Um, but like the, the flat part that the actual bandsaw is attached to Josh, would it be a good STL Sunday build series for something more complex, like an RC golf cart or something crazy, but RC, you know, sometimes, but we did the trailer first, which was like a multi-part thing. And it was going to go, honestly, I kind of like when these are just standalone projects that turn into one and done. It's, you know, we've experimented with the, the more complex things. And I kind of like when they're just, you come, you kind of see one project at a time. You're in, you're out, you like it, you don't. Um, if you don't like it, maybe next week's better for you. So... And I think for me, it's something that I end up enjoying more. So selfishly, I think maybe I will say that I would rather keep it to 
single night projects when possible. I'm going to hit P for project to grab those two surfaces. We're going to put some collinear constraints on one side, but not the other. We're going to do dimension off of that. This side sits out a little bit further, so it's going to go about 10. I'm going to do a construction line from the origin over to, let's draw it to this side because it doesn't really matter, but this one's more visible. So we went to the midpoint, then I put a horizontal constraint on to get everything nice and centered. Josh is a one and done kind of guy. <laughs> Thanks, video. I appreciate that. So let's put a, uh, I mean, honestly, we're just, this is, I don't need to worry too many, too much about dimensions. We're just going anyway. So that's going to give us that base. Let's, they also have a little knockout there in the center. We're going to toggle construction off, toggle it back on. It's got a little bump out section where the, the actual material is usually centered ish. Kind of the reason, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's go 20. That, okay. Now, Q. And we're gonna drag that up like five. Let's go to five. Yeah. All right. Seeing some other, so we're gonna need a, we're gonna need a wheel on this side. That's not a big deal. Let's do, I'm gonna put some, oops. I'm gonna chamfer these corners. I'm gonna go equal distance. Like that. I'm gonna hit the combine button up here in the top and then I'm gonna, Oh, actually, when I hit extrude a little bit ago, it combined all those bodies, which I was going to do anyway. So there we go. OK, there's a difference between the the saw up on top there and the one that I'm looking at. The one that I'm looking at on my screen here, it actually, this deck is not all the same height where this one in the, the example image are, is. So I'm going to go with the one that I've got in the example image, but I'm going to make this just a little bit taller to make sure that that works. Let's go to, let's go to eight. So we got that. We de we'll need to make sure that we make some uh, provisions to attach everything, but we'll get there on that. Now let's do a, we need to do the hinge portion on this right side to be able to attach. I'm gonna base that off of the sketch planes. That would be the XZ plane, which is the front plane. So let's draw pivot circle, a base. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to hit B for project and grab that. L for line, X to make it construction. So we got that. I'm going to connect those two lines. And then with that, I'm going to select midpoint, make them equal. That way, we got everything in good shape. We're going to make that a. So this thing should move, but how do we want it to move freely and easily? Or do you want to, you know, because normally they've got like the, a, a strut that now, Jesse got me with the no audio comment. I saw it. 
had to look. Normally they've got like a strut that helps control the downward movement. Um, but we're not going to have that. So I need to figure out a way that, how are we going to keep this thing either up or in place or, or not? I'd, I'd rather not just be, you know, tightening a screw down or not. So that's, hmm. I don't know yet. This we're gonna do at 2.6. It'll be a threaded boss. Um, we'll do 10 millimeters there and we'll do a distance of 10 millimeters high. Oh, need to make sure we've got a tangent constraint there. Do a rotation point 10 millimeters off and like 16 wide just because do that now we're going to do this as a symmetric extrusion we're going to go out that'll give us 10 millimeters wide that should be a hefty hefty base servo saver spring huh Make it use a spring like from a chip clip. I see what you mean. Make it a 608 bearing. I have a bunch of them. What's a 608 bearing? I don't know what that is. Um, I do like the spring idea. Hmm. What kind of common spring would a lot of us have around? Somebody come up with a spring that we like is common that a lot of people are going to have around. We'll make it so that it's usable without that, but six weight bearing is like the skateboard side. Oh, Jesus, that's a big old bearing. <laughs> skateboard bearing. Aren't those, aren't those big ink pen? Um, I only have, I don't have spring pens. Okay, somebody grab a pen. A pen spring is easy enough because I think we can, uh, I do like the chip clip spring as well, but I think it might be, uh, it might be a little bit, they're more, how would I say that? Like it's gonna be more dependent, like it could vary. If I do a regular coil spring, then I think that it, uh, that, yeah, I don't use, I don't use like a clicky pen. I'm very particular about pens. Who would have, who would have guessed that I'm particular about something? But yeah, I don't like clicky pens. I like I'm very particular, I like certain types. Um, hey, Nicole. We'll see if she can. Um, can you find me a pen with a clicking? Oh, hey. yeah. Can you find me a pen that has like a click top, like a spring top? Shitting? No. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Okay. So. What we'll do is we'll put that spring in this area. So let's, okay, let's work on the top part first. It's a little bit, it's kind of a tricky part of the top because they, they sit at an angle generally, you know, the actual bandsaw portion. So that we're going to go 3.5, that will go 10. We're going to go Q and select that. We're going to drag that out. Let's go like eight. Thank you. Appreciate it.
it seriously? Got it. What if that actually writes in paint? Yeah, it does. So this is a pretty common looking pen spring. We'll get some dimensions off of that in just a moment. She'll get the pen back, don't worry. So uh, on this thing, we, we need to make sure to do new body on that extrusion. Let's throw some color on this just so that we know the differences between our bodies as we go. Okay, um, so now, like I was saying, that top plane, I'm going to, let's see, let's do a new sketch. I'm gonna start it based on that. We're gonna click 3D sketch down here at the bottom though. Um, and then let's see. I'm going to take and rotate the plane. Double clicked on set pivot. And I'm going to set the pivot. Well, let me just drag it. It will not. Uh, it's always a pain to point to point. Direct. Okay. We're going to do a line from here. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to, let's see, should we just, I'm going to draw the bandsaw in the kind of horizontal position because we'll be able to rotate it up. So that's actually, that will make things easier. And then, so we did that. Now they lay back. What's that going to lay back? Like 15 degrees? 30. Uh, th that's 35 degrees. That doesn't look terrible. Let's go with that. Oops. That will do uh, 105 and then this top 105. Whoops. Definitely mistyped something there. There we go. Forty five, I'm good with. Finish sketch. There we go. So that just gave me that gave me a sketch to work with. Now the jet option in the upper corner there is <laughs> Again, that one's got the kind of rounded top. Mine has the more square top in the other photo. It doesn't really matter. Um, I can't wait to get mine. About to upgrade the whole. I didn't. I Again, I'm only seeing parts of. For anybody who isn't totally familiar, I'm not very good at seeing all of the comments on, on these because I'm kind of either in a weird trance of, you know, looking at my own stuff or... So I'm doing, this is 12 millimeters wide. That seems like too much, doesn't it? Let's go five and five, 10 millimeters total. Uh, we're not gonna do join. We're gonna do new body for now. We're gonna end up combining it with that pivot. 
but I need to go back and edit that original sketch. We need to take that. Pivot definitely. That's okay. We're going to start with this for now. Since we kind of have that initial initial sketch, it allows us to to work off things a little bit easier. Six back, and then let's do, I'm gonna do uh, a little bit. This should make a little bit more sense as we go. So this is going to end up being the blank that is for our, the actual saw portion, but just kind of whittling myself there. It's not necessarily the, the best way or the easiest, it was just the way that I'm that I'm getting there. So let's put a a little bit of a chamfer on that or a fillet on that side. And now let's do the same on the top, but we're gonna go almost full. 25, yeah. Like that. All right. So we're going to, I'm going to combine that with the actual mount, we're going to undo that. When you do combine, if you click on the one with the color first and then select, it'll make everything actually proper. Now they're colliding, or the actual bandsaw was colliding with that portion, so, um, or with the, the mounting portion, I should say. So I'm going to make an 11 millimeter circle. And then we're going to that didn't work at all. We're going to hide the hide the bodies for a moment, drag it back. And then we're going to go up to the objects to cut and we're going to deselect the first body. So what that did was it just gave us that relief cut around the top there so that everything actually clears during rotation. Now at this point, it's only would only pivot off this one side. We're going to bring another mount down off the back. So it's double shear and actually mounts a little bit more proper or more secure. I don't know that I don't know that any of this is quote unquote proper or not. So we're going to add the cut for the portion of the call it the throat of the bandsaw. 45. Yeah, we'll start with that. I'm going to grab this and then we're going to use that as our projection since that was kind of centered on it before. Let's go 40 finish. Cutting through. All right. Now I'm going to add a chamfer to this, we're going to go back to a two distance, we're going to add just a couple of millimeters that way. And then something like that kind of traditional bandsaw look. Hide the bodies <laughs> nine and one. <laughs> So 
there is a bunch of detail that we could put onto this top portion as well. And we'll add some of it, but we're not gonna go crazy. We're gonna keep that somewhat, somewhat simplified. We'll add probably like the adjustment slot for where you would adjust the tension of the actual blade. Well, you would have the wheel at the end that you would crank to adjust the tension, but that's uh, some little things there. We need to, I think at this point, I want to add the mechanism to start putting the pen spring in for the actual return. Wonder. I feel like these pen springs actually have a decent amount of tension that it might actually allow this thing to, to get it up there pretty well. So, all right, let's let's play with that idea. Um, I'm going to draw it off of that XZ plane again. I'm going to let's I'm going to try and preload it a, a decent amount since reject that put that onto there. Um, the diameter of the pin spring is four point five roughly so let's go with like a 4.5 and put what a millimeter and a half on each side so three so 7.5 something like that that'll give us give us an area now we're just going to put a dimension on this as kind of a placeholder um let's go with six for for the time being. So that'll give us that. Now again, I'm gonna do a symmetric and a distance of 7.5, ooh, total distance. Put a radius on this already just because 7.5 divided by two Actually, I'm just going to do uh, 2.5, just because I like the look of that a little bit better. You have a circle maker, but no click pen. I don't like click pens. I like a little bit nicer pen. Pen aficionado. Okay. And we said that was a four point. So we're going to go 4.8 uh, millimeters here. And we're going to put just a little bit of a relief cut. Two millimeters down. So it gives it gives it a little bit of a base to set down into. And now what we can see is that our rather than absolutely launch this pin or this spring. I'm going to put the spring over the shaft of one of my tools and I'm going to compress it down. Compressed length, total compressed length is 5.6 millimeters. Unsprung is 17. So what I say, we'll call it six and Six, six and 16, 10 millimeters of actual travel, roughly. Um, so again, we're gonna pull that right on that same plane. I'm going to click project and grab that those so that I see the surfaces because I need that bottom surface there. Now I'm gonna do a circle actually from there now I want to actually how are we gonna do I'm gonna do it a different way I'm gonna do a circle like 
like that. And this whole circle is just going to be a construction. Just using that as a bit of a guide. Um, just gives me gives me a little bit of a I'm gonna do L for line, X for construction. Now, since we're kind of designing this at a uh, There we go. This is going to be six millimeters. About like that. And okay. I'm going to fix that point. Just right click fix and that'll like is most again, all of this is just kind of giving me some geometry to, to work off of. So now that I have all of that, six millimeters is going to be my fully compressed length since the uh, since the bandsaw is closed, that's when that spring should be totally down. Now we should be able to kind of see how far it'll open as I, I'll be able to rotate it and look and adjust, but let's see, let's see what we've done. So we're going to do a midpoint constraint on that line. And then I want, we're going to do a construction line from where that midpoint is to the center of that arc, which is, oh, it's actually horizontal at that point, which was not planned. That's just how that worked out. Lucky for me, I guess. Um, so we, that's going to be 7.5 millimeters. Actually that's to the, that will be to the point where the springs bottomed out. So I actually need to make that two millimeters down further, but it's okay. I can do that by just, I'll change this to, just go to five. So we won't have total spring compression, but close. So we're going to do that. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to just draw a box straight up. And I think that we're going to be able to get away with this because that the bandsaw portion above it is at an angle. So it's going to, it's going to collide at some point. I might have to go up further than 10. We'll go up uh, 15. Yeah, you can see where it intersects that there. Actually, let's just go 20. Yeah. And then we're going to hit Q. And symmetric total distance of 7.5. And we're going to just do new body. Actually, we don't need to. It doesn't touch anything else. So we can hit join. Okay. And now we can do a... Let's hide body 1 and 2. We can leave those wheels on and do that. I can't remember what I made that. Uh, it's like 7.8. No, 4.8. It was 4.8. Pretty fair. That's like, I need to. line construction not that it really needed to be defined but uh, 
There we go. So we've done. I'm just going to do a press pull on that and do a join. That'll get that cleaned up a little bit. I'm not going to put any radius on these parts yet until we get both sides worth it. So. Anyway. So, oh, I see an issue here before we, I'm just going to try and fix before we get too far. And that's that that threaded portion was not going to go far enough. Whoops. There, wanted to make sure that we still had a, a good thread in there. That should be, ooh, diameters, How did that happen? Thought we I think I missed a profile when I extruded that top portion. I just want to fix it before we get too far because Okay. So it should have happened right here. I'm guessing. No, it didn't. I think I was just thinking of this backwards. I'm actually going to make this one. I'm going to make this one 2.5 and we're going to make that one 3.5. There we go. Just changed my mind a little bit. Uh, so we're going to roll that back forward a little bit. You can see the process here. RC Hangout, what's going on? This is the uh, start of our bandsaw model. I've got a little bit of an image you can see there in the corner. Save. Good idea. Bandsaw saved. All right, so we have that. This setup here should be able to keep the, uh, hopefully that re retains the spring just fine, but it sh and it should work to help everything rotate. Let's add the double shear portion of this, like I was thinking. Uh, 3.5, 10, and we're just going to go, straight horizontal, and add some tangency to it, there we go. I'm just going to go up 10 millimeter, uh, 15, like that. Now, when we extrude this one, I'm going to select the profiles like normal, and I'm going to add the, the width kind of like normal, say five millimeters. But rather than just doing the profile plane, we're actually going to offset it by, um, I'm going to do by one millimeter because it'll kind of allow me to actually I'm going to do 0.5 like normal. Um, I feel like I should probably go in and just add a half a millimeter of clearance here because I want to keep the, uh, the spring portion centered. So I don't want to add too much slop at the same point. Okay. 
now we're going to, I'm gonna box it in a little bit. going to join it all that. So now we have some double shear going on. We'll go three there. Just some, this is some mainly cosmetic stuff. Three on that side and we're instead of doing a champ or fill it. Ah, never mind. I guess we're gonna have to. It doesn't like to fill it. Oop. There. So we have double shear mounting. And yeah. Do a slight amount of cleanup. There we go. Stuff flows together a little bit better now. Nope. So we need to add the motor portion, so like the gearbox and a couple of the little details and we'll be able to move past this. We're an hour in, not, a, not too long, but I wanna get into it, do a couple of those, you know, like I was talking about, do a couple speed round type options. So let's put a gearbox looking portion on this. 15, 20. This would be like the ring and pinion that would adjust from the, the motor would go up, drive the belt, the belt goes down, and then it's got a ring and pinion set up that changes the direction of everything. So technically we do, or we should make sure that it's centered on the There we go. just for scale realism and no other decent reason. Okay. Five and now no normally these things have like a lot of cast opt oh, actually the one in my example photo should have just done exactly what I had in my example photo because that thing is just way easier to do than the other one that I was looking at. Now we're going to do a inch like that. going to do a rectangle. I'm just going to select the actual uh, select the center point rectangle, make it tangent. Why does it? Oh, that side didn't want to. So, but I'm only going to select the lower portions of it. We're going to pull all out to the edge. It annoys me that that doesn't all match up. So we're going to just Come on. There we 
go. I could have just pressed pulled from the bottom and dragged that down. That would have been way faster, but whatever. I didn't do that. Couple of little All right, so the actual, the motor and the belt housing, I think that we will make as a separate body that that, and that will all attach to this. Um, a jigsaw blade, I was thinking about that, like as far as the actual blade portion of this, if you cut down and just like inset a small version of it or a small piece of a jigsaw blade, it probably would look about right. Um, so what maybe we'll do is we'll make the blade part separate on this and then you, uh, uh, so how is this going to print lots of supports? Well, parts of this would take support, uh, with this whole thing, I might actually just take and, uh, print it with this side laying down on the bed and then print it up from there. And this would be the only thing that would really and even that, that actually you would probably print that without any support. You could probably print this whole part without any support, without any, um, this one here, maybe you, you would probably need a little support around the base. So, um, not, not too difficult. I think you'd be able to get away with printing most all of this without, without any support. So let's, uh, let's put the little the little blade slot in while we're, while we're talking about it. So I'm going to do a, we're going to do like, so since the, you know, the, the blades normally come out and they get twisted in there to go vert, you know, vertical. Um, eight millimeter. I'm just going to, give it a, you know, some wiggle room. You guys can, hopefully it'll fit whatever blade you guys come up with. Um, and then you can glue it in there. I'll also make, maybe I'll just make a, a simple STL that can go in there and you guys can use that as the actual, like if you don't want to go find another, another part. then you can just put something in, but oops. So we're going to drag it a little ways like that. And then oh, we'll go change it to two sides. So it'll be something. There you go. So that gives you just a slot you can take and then just put anything else you want up in there and call it a blade done and done. All right, let's get to the motor. So we'll start on the top. We're going to do the one side of the belt housing. Let's estimate the motor, something like that. So yeah, that'd be fine. Let's define that at uh, 25. To align to the bottom. Make. Put a tangent constraint on that and coin. So there we go. Right now we just need to 
put a few dimensions on things. 30. This is, it's current, make it 15. Yeah, that looks fine. 30, 25. Let me make sure that we have a way to attach these. This is going to be new body. Okay. I don't remember what size we made. Uh, maybe we can key it over that rather than put a screw into that portion. We'll put a screw into the motor just to make it a little bit easier. So, um, Let's hide that. We'll do new sketch, grab that portion and hit P for project just to And I'm just going to do another circle. That's, we can't do a full circle otherwise. Oops. Otherwise everything won't clear. So we're just gonna do, I guess I can just do a line across. There we go. Now we'll just grab that and drag that down line to an offset five two millimeters so that way it kind of keys around it that'll hold it in place All right, throw a motor on this thing and we're getting close to reasonably done. Not the most detailed one we've ever done, but. Still clears, yep. All clears properly. Call it like that. Put some, put some fillet on the end. Let's do a construction plane from here and just drag that down a little bit and put some little bit of detail on this motor. Do line X. I grabbed that profile just so I could grab the uh, Something like that. We're going to do that line parallel to those. Just some detail. I feel like that could have been, oops. A little bit bigger. There we go. So 
So now we just need to come up with a quick way to attach the motor to the base. And I think that let's do that by, we're gonna do a circle out here. Inner will be 3.5, outer will do it like eight. Put some tangent constraints on this. Come on. There we go. And we just need to define it slightly where it needs to be because why not? Go five millimeters up, and then that's gonna. I'm just gonna do that as a new body. And I'm gonna select that whole profile again. We're gonna hide the motor. P for project, grab the whole thing. I'm gonna put a little bit of divisor line. D one and we're just going to grab that also a new body. I'm going to combine that onto that, hide it for a moment. And now I'm just going to do a Combine this and that. Oh, that did not combine. Or did it? Oh, I guess it did. But we're going to do a little bit of cleanup on it. Just making sure we have a nice flat surface for it to mate to. Oh, and that needs to be 2.5. Oh, doesn't need to go that far. 10 millimeters. So, oh, it. Sorry, pulleys, pulleys, pulleys. He's in, now he needs to do the pulleys. Wait, what pulleys? Reverse cut pulleys. What are we doing? What pulleys? I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> So, um, I really don't know what you guys are talking about. Big pulley doesn't go on the, what? Oh. I guess I didn't even think about, I, for some reason I was really thinking that that was the way that the pulleys went. Okay. Well, um. may just be I'm gonna have to change some things because uh, do I not have a I'm gonna just move that like that let's see if I can make this work if my everything is going to fall apart. Ah, it fell apart a little bit. Okay. What? Oh, 
Oh, that was that one there. Okay. That's okay. I'll just do like a 10 mil there. It's a European saw. Yes. Oops. Now let's see if that worked or not. Can I put a chamfer on that? It does not seem to want to let me, but either way, it should still work. It's okay. Okay, so that's fixed. I think we might need one more cut though to make everything. I, I think that I'm colliding right here. I think we have an a, uh, issue with them both touching. So I'm going to turn that off. See, I thought I combined those already, but I did not evidently. So we're going to grab that, do a circle. Do 9.5. And we just need to make sure that it's only cutting the last body. Hit OK. There we go. So now you'll be able to attach the motor and pulley combo to the blade setup. We've got a blade ch channel in there. Does this run 124 scale motors? Um, this is not our most detailed. I might, it's a very basic bandsaw. I feel like it needs a lot of, a lot of extra to make this thing look, look as, look right and, and good. But I think that I might play around with that a little bit more right before I upload it. Um, and instead, we'll, uh, we'll change it up a little bit and go to like some, some of those speed round type, uh, I'll just see if I can, what I can get done on these, these ridiculous pro, you know, some sort of very, simple scale item in, in, you know, five or 10 minutes. We'll see what we, we'll come up with the idea and we'll see what, uh, what time limit we can do. Oops. Need to kill button and an HD though. Yeah. So I'll put a, I'll put the HD logo on the front there and, uh, I need to, I want to put a couple of the, the details on the top portion, maybe add a little bit more detail around this gearbox. Um, and then, you know, just, I think it just needs some, some, uh, some details and some little just chamfers here and there. And I think it'll actually, it'll actually look like a decent, and like I said, it'll have that, uh, it'll have a spring. So I think it should actually function in a, in a way that'll make it, make it decent or make it somewhat cool for a simple scale item. So, you know, why not? Not my, not my finest scale item, but not my worst. Let's 
So, all right, let's go to some suggestions. You guys put in the uh, chat some fairly simple items that we think might be like something I could get done in that this like 10 minute range. Like if you say a riding lawnmower, there's no way that that's going to happen, you know, like, so that's uh, and yeah, like scale items, things like that. Uh, so table saw, that's a good one. Christmas tree. <laughs> hey, Christmas tree. That's pretty festive. Uh, you know, not a bad idea. A shop vac that would be a neat that would be a good one too. Christmas ornament, <laughs> electrical outlet. Well, that would that's pretty tiny. That would be pretty easy. Scale engine that's not reasonable for as the amount of time that we're looking at. Uh, there's no vice for the saw. Yeah, like it, this definitely needs a vice. Um, you know, some of that stuff. That's those are the things that I'll I'll try and put on there. The switch things like that. A truck bed rack that's too specific to like a body so that doesn't really work scale LS engine mm, maybe in like five hours not five minutes shop vac that's two that's two people have said shop vac I like I, that's it that's a pretty decent what's I don't know what a skip saw is um, scale low rider wheel that doesn't fit exactly what we're talking about we're talking quick dirty items I mean scale low rider Again, I don't like 3D printed wheels though. Um, jack stand, there's too many jack stands already. Engine block table, nice, I like that. Coffee maker, <laughs> I like that too. Okay, um, I like coffee maker and I like shop vac. Um, let's do, let's do a couple of, let's do, oops. I'm going to save this first. Um, okay, let's do a let's do a shop vac first, and then we're gonna do a coffee maker because I think those are fun. So, all right, let's. Uh, ooh, can I pull up like a? I can just put it on. I'll put it on my phone. Although that doesn't make it very. Let me see if I can pull up a uh, countdown timer. Hey, Google has one built in. What do you know? What What do we think for a shot back? Ten. I think ten minutes is. Ten minutes seems pretty reasonable, doesn't it? Now, let me see if I can do, I'm gonna add this window capture, add. Gamer, hit okay. All right. Tran edit, hold please. Okay, we're getting there. Okay. So I'm going to put it there and then there we go. It's in place. So I'm going to quick do a shop back picture. I'm going to find a picture and we're going to do this. Uh, if you're using OBS, you can use it as an imposed mask. I did not know that. And I did not see that. I'll have to look into that. One of those things that I should definitely do one not in the middle of. <laughs> Um, so I'm thinking, uh, one kind of like that, right? Shop vac, shop vac. 
the traditional. So that's the way that I'm thinking of going. Are we ready? So, all right, new. I'm actually even kind of nervous. All right, here we go. Starting timer. And just going to start with a base. I'm going to drag it up and we're going to do some taper to it. That's too much, whatever, uh, five at that. We're going to make it a new body. So it's different colors. Now let's I feel like I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna fall behind like right at the the end is when I'm just gonna fall apart actually, and so and definitely not doing any uh any decent dimensioning or actually closing and absolutely not do, reading any comments. I can only imagine if I like didn't have the screen on the right thing or anything like that. And I just ignored it the whole time and ignored every single comment <laughs> that's just screaming at me. And I put a handle on the top. Like this. already two minutes in, yikes. I'm gonna do symmetric. Oh, I shouldn't have done that so close to the ends. Uh, edit. Ah, no time, no time. It's okay, it's close enough. Handle on the top. Definitely need to put a that. Is there time to put some color on it? Yeah. All right. Uh, feet. Let's do that line. Hey, come in. Gotta hustle. New box, sure. Okay, come on. So, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to, come on, pattern. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Uh -huh. Bodies, rotate, so, uh, no. select that. Axis is, oh, it's not gonna, do that, create a copy, um, 90. Oh, I should have done a pattern so I didn't have to do this three times. Or I could have, ah. 
near, what am I at? Five minutes. Come on. See, this is when knowing more hotkeys in, in Fusion would have been very helpful. So I put feet on it. Now I'm going to combine them all. I should have put, I should have put wheels on it before I did all those. I'm going to do that. Like that. Ooh, um, that's fine. I'm just going to do like that, but then we're going to do offset by, nope, 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 uh, negative one, point five, dot, gah, I screwed up. I meant to do that as a join. Body hit. Okay, and then combine them. I'm nervous. Oh, why did it only... Why did it do that? Uh, this is annoying me. I'm going to waste all this. I have three minutes left on this. Oh, this is murdering me. Now, create, select an axis, this, and then do 90. There we go. Okay, we need to add the the inlet. Where's that at? It's on the top part. All right, so uh, minute and a half. Uh, what else does the shot pack need? Uh, I mean the hose, but that's that's kind of difficult. Um, you could do some fuel tubing. So let's do a uh, just the the nozzle, right? Uh, we'll do that at point eight. Something like that. And let's just do a, a slash cut on it. There you go, uh, 45 seconds. That. Okay, 
Done. That's that's a shot back. Twenty seven seconds left. <laughs> you know, the attachments definitely could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's definitely not the the prettiest but we hey it's a <laughs> hey <laughs> shell the body to hold dust yeah no power quarter hose like i said the hose i think you have to use some you have to use some nitro fuel to me you know, something like that, but <laughs> kind of fun. 10 minutes worth of detail. I should, I should have tried to put the HD logo on it in the last, uh, Josh got an idea for the name of the RCPC orange peel special. There's no, there's no orange peel on that thing. It's smooth, super smooth. All right. That one was fun. Corrugated washer hose. Washer. I don't know what that is. So, um, some black wire con. Yeah, some black art. Is this still on? So I think that would. Uh, I think you'd be able to make that reasonable. A couple of things that I would have done different. This overhang here isn't perfect. Uh, you can see it's like a little bit of a, a lip there, but I didn't have time to fix that. Of course, I would add some some details and fillets and things like that. But anyway, all right, we're going to save that shot back. We'll upload that as well. You get the 10 minute, the 10 minute scale accessory. Um, Okay, we did talk about a, uh, what was the other one I wanted to do? We're gonna do the other one that we thought about, which was the coffee maker, right? So, re reset the clock. 10, mi 10 minutes. 10 minute coffee maker, I think will be pretty decent. I think I should be able to, but I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna do that one all from, all from scratch without, uh, without an image start. Okay. So we're going to do rectangular base. What's a coffee pot? It's 10 inches wide. So it's an inch 25 millimeters. Yeah. Something like that. That. This one, I think, I mean. Oh, let me grab, project that lower. Grab, put some tangent C's onto this. It's a, it's a pretty good sized coffee pot. I'm going to say. Do a little bit of the the depression there. Okay. 
Oops. That new body. That and whoops, that was all about. We can pull that up. Making the spout portion of a coffee pot uh, a little bit more, I mean, do something like, I mean, that's, that's definitely bad. That. Uh, and then whatever, call it good. I'm doing speed rounds on two. Matt, that's where I got the idea. I'm there's no I'm taking no uh no shame in in stealing the idea. Um I accept I accept exactly what that is. You're welcome. But the reason that I even knew about it is because I watched and that should be good enough for you. Except yours are a minute and mine are 10 minutes. that oops I need to just turn off that thing so I can focus on it Two distance, there we go. Shell the pot, no time. There's no time to shell. Um, I'm gonna do cut like that. What are we at for time? Not much. A uh, new body. Okay. 
Okay, come on. That, let's put some taper in it. Oop, ne negative taper. Something like that. It's like the coffee, the filter thing. Um, See, can I do it like that? Symmetric, new body, join the we go. Minute left. Man, the distances are way off, aren't they? <laughs> I didn't. Um, whoa. <laughs> That's the dumbest looking thing ever. I really thought the coffee pot thing was going to be way more ridiculously easy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> F for effort. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it would have been easy. You made it harder. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh my God. Ah. <laughs> the Lloyd coffee pot. That is a absolutely hideous coffee pot. I'm not even saving that. Okay, we're gonna try it. I can't end on that. Oh my God. Okay, more suggestions because that one was absolutely terrible. So we're gonna do one more round <laughs> of something. And, uh, oh, that was absolutely awful. The Gen 8 of coffee pots. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god a vice a vice isn't a bad one at all i like that one um uh beer bottle we did a beer bottle uh, to a broom <laughs> a br that's interesting a coffee pot but better <laughs> sandblast cabinet i don't think that i could get that done in 10 minutes i mean maybe possibly I could, but that's like, that's kind of a good one to do. Like, like maybe of something like an actual project. I kind of like that. 
Christmas. Someone says Christmas. Ben says Christmas tree again. We did have Dana also had said Christmas tree. That was pretty. Toilet. Ooh, toilet would actually be kind of hard. Toilet just with like the shape of those things, like uh, it would be it would be pretty difficult, I think. I don't think I could get a toilet done in 10 minutes. Um water fountain, gas pump, shop sink. Um, let's see. All right, let me pick something out of it. Uh, a steel chainsaw just for Matt, right, Dale? Um, okay, let's do... Let, what do we have? A urinal, parts washer. A poor drummer. Drummer boy? What is a drummer boy? <laughs> Um, let's see, two floor outhouse, <laughs> just perfect for pardon my noobs for Sm Smiggins folly. Um, what, what did we have? Let's, let's just, uh, oh, I'm trying to think gas can we've done guitars kind of hard. There's just so many curves. It would take so long to get everything actually looking looking proper guitar would be kind of a fun one to do um but like for an actual a snowman ben's trying to help me redeem myself in a reasonable way i mean i feel like i'll, I'll do a christmas version we'll do it the, you know like an actual Uh, okay, I'm just going to pick one of these ones. We had uh, a sandblast cabinet, which I kind of liked. I feel like I could... Let's. I'm actually going to do the sandblast cabinet. It's a little bit tough, but not really at the same time. Like, there's elements to it, but I think I could make that work. So, uh, who had said that? Brian Foley had said that. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the sandblast cabinet. All right, here we go. And starting. So, start with the floor of it. I'm not, I think that the uh, size worked out about right. Gonna offset the walls. Um, like that, then let's cut it. Forty-five. I'm doing it. Offset negative two. Join that. Let's do a cut on the front that will be the window. Throw some radius in there. Here we go. Um, let's do, oh, well, let me do an offset of an offset. We'll do um, 
5.65. Oops. There, we created a door, which I haven't attached yet, but it's okay. P for project, grab the whole thing, offset the whole thing by negative three. And then we're gonna do like this. Do those new body. I know we don't have anything on the inside, but um, let's at least do Go. Get in there. So uh, I just saw somebody said they just joined. What am I making? We we made some. Uh, I don't even remember what we made now. But right now we're doing uh, speed rounds for no reason. that and this is Saint yes sorry uh, I'm gonna do that actually as a body and offsetting a plane. Can I do? Oh, wow, look at how good I guessed that. Never would have thought I would have guessed that correctly. <laughs> Features. That would have been that last two features. And see if that will mirror. It did. So we've got a functional door hinge even. To your sandblasting cabinet um, so that the cabinet doesn't swing too far open we're just going to add a bit of a stop body join those uh one thing i didn't do was
Uh, it's going to be three new body. That's okay. And then I'm just going to really need to combine one of them, but that's what we're going to do. And what I'm doing is 3.5. putting a hole for the legs. So I mean, it, turn those back on. All the other feet really don't matter. I just need to um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. mirror. That select plane. Line almost there. Ten seconds. Oh, I'm not going to be able to. Ah, oh, almost had the there. That would have attached all of it. So close. Oh, holes for gloves. I missed, I shouldn't have done, I should have just attached, I forgot about that. That, no, that was a massive oversight. I needed that. I was thinking of things that I didn't, I was just adding things because I thought I had some time and I forgot to add that the obvious part of the actual where to put your hands. See, should have looked at the chat. Dang it. Oh, well, that was close enough. That was, but hey, there you go. You can build your own scale accessories in 10 minutes, if you like, with a bunch of, you know, people staring too. But I think I will get these uploaded just because why not? These were, maybe I'll, Maybe I'll spend some extra time on them. Probably not, but it's a possibility. So yeah, there you go. Um, that was kind of fun for a ridiculous amount of, uh, what did we do first? I can't even remember what we drew first. Oh, the bandsaw. Yeah, the bandsaw I think is actually going to be a a fun item for people to print. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if the, uh, uh, what? <laughs> let's see. What were the other comments? I was, I'm definitely missing comments. I know. Sorry. Failed. <laughs> uh, now the gloves for those holes. Hmm. You know what, Mike J that, uh, you're going to have to, I don't know what you're gonna do there. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I didn't put the actual the the bottom sand feet in just to make it so that you could actually uh, 3D print this, uh, at least on the bottom side. I could put it on the inside at least, but um, that might actually be if I just grab the four corners. Uh, with those armholes, I might have to. 
I might have to change this. If I go up two millimeters, but then go in, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. Uh, see if it, hmm, that would take me a month. <laughs> Can I go up higher, maybe? Yeah, it does. Um, let me, I'm just going to hit OK on this, but then I'm going to grab those armholes, drag those inwards. Hmm. I don't know why it won't let me. Chamfer the edge. Hmm. Nope. No bueno. Maybe it's the front edge that's causing it. Hmm. I don't know. Could probably do it a different way, but it's just not wanting to. Obviously, if I was going through and do it, doing it in a uh, in a way that was more thought out, I would have would have had room for that, but not in my hastily hastily designed fashion. So you have the smallest amount of uh, of taper on the insides, and then you know. I guess it depends on the type of them that you use. Like our, some of ours at work have the uh, containment at the bottom, the whole deal, but, but you know, maybe one of you guys actually would like a, uh, would be able to do it like the pool table bottom. Right. That's the separate from the, from inside, do a separate piece. I mean, obviously the, the point was to try and do this in 10 minutes and not spend the rest of the evening on it, but if I just especially the fact that I didn't really design any of this all that well or as the outside slightly. What is that thing doing? There we go. Weird. Just doing new body. So I'm just going to grab these. If I do them one at a time, I bet it'll allow me. Who knows? I'll still upload this thing, even though it's kind of kind of shoddy work. But the uh, there's a couple of little things that you know I I would have liked to. The hinges, while they would function, they're not pretty. <laughs> they 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 definitely needed a little little cleanup. Maybe I'll do that, and we'll we'll call it its best. Call it the, call it a night. So. In the end, the bandsaw was the, the main project. I'm going to get that thing kind of fixed up a little bit, put some details on it, and then I'll have that uploaded first. Shop back, I'll probably upload. That thing is, I'm closing that and never to be seen again. And then I'll, I'll probably upload this as well. Looks good enough for a back corner of a ghetto scale garage. You know what? That's about as accurate as I think you could get. Maybe I'll put some sort of retaining in there so you can put some 
Lexan in your sandblast cabinet. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I, uh, I didn't pay a, a great amount of attention to the uh, to the audience numbers, but it looked like we had a pretty decent night the whole, the whole time. So appreciate, every, appreciate everybody for joining in and, and saying hello, the whole deal. That uh, next, do an ice chest like the front of a store. Oh, you mean like the, the, the ice cream counter? Mm, no, I want ice cream. So anyway, all right. That was a fun end to it. Worth saying, hey, 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 wanted to say, hey, what's going on, Alan? Good seeing you, man. Uh, slap a big HD on. Yeah, we'll put uh, we'll put HD logos on the ones that we get uploaded. Bandsaw, like I said, I'll get the detail added to it, get it ready, separated, and uh, STLs put up so you guys can download and 3D print. But that will do it for this STL Sunday. Going to knock this one out for the night. Appreciate it again. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you next time. Yep. Some videos to get done. Hopefully, I'm going to have the RC motorcycle video done tonight. So later guys, have a good night. See you next time.